Okay, well, thank you for listening so closely. This is like the old teaching days, like one, two, three, all eyes on me. Who did that in school? Um, thank you, my name is Janine Koenigke, and I oversee a new program here at STEM Connector, uh, which is our grants and proposals program. So even though we've been around for 11 years, this is a relatively new thing that we launched in 2021. So I wanna share with you a couple of the key components and as our member partners, I'm hoping that you will listen to this and think through how we might be working together uh, more closely on some of these opportunities, especially so many that have been announced in these six or seven months recently. So I'm gonna kick this off. I probably should have tried the clicker before. There we go, that's me, you can see that. Um, Yes, the STEM Connector Grants and Proposals Program was established in January of 2021, and our primary focus is strengthening STEM education and career pathways, so kind of the K through gray pathways. Designing and implementing interactive experiences to enhance practice and spark new collaborations. Facilitating mentoring opportunities like our Million Women Mentors, and beyond that, uh, there's a lot of mentoring programs that are of value, and we want to be able to explore all of those as well. Um, broadening access to STEM and promoting diversity, equity, inclusion, and access. And engaging with emerging industries fueled by STEM talent, like the project we have right now with Biomate. Okay. So, what we've done so far, we've submitted 15 grant proposals as either the lead agency or sub between April of 2021 and the end of September in 2022. We submitted 10 proposals to federal agencies, including Department of Defense with our Biomade project, uh, NSF, who I know we have a guest today, um, NASA, and um, Economic Development Agency. We also submitted five different proposals to venture funds, corporations, family, and nonprofit foundations. And we partnered with 24 unique organizations across our membership or potential membership, um, including, and I won't read all of those, you can see them, but you know, universities, K through 12, MPOs, uh, industry partners, association partners, and, uh, and government partners. So we have nine additional grant proposals pending decision or are about to be submitted by the end of this year. Several, seven to federal agencies, including our NSF uh, network uh, connector grant that we'll be submitting and I've talked to several of you about and hope to talk to you more about. Um, and two to family and corporate foundations. So, how are we doing? So far in that 18 months, we've been able to secure $535,000 in grants to support STEM connector and member projects. I know that's not a big number to a lot of you, but we think for a brand new program, that's not so bad. Um, and we hope next year we'll be standing here with much larger numbers and many, many more partners to announce. Um, three of those awards were federal um, grants and one was a private foundation. So we have about a 20% submission win rate. Not great, but not bad. So we're here to talk about that. Um, so here's our first case study. This is Biomade, which was funded through the Air Force Defense uh, Research Science Program. Uh, some of you have been at our Biomade Innovation Summit and have seen some of the work we've done around biomanufacturing. We partnered with the University of California at Davis, where we have lovely Erin, who presented yesterday, um, and with their College of Engineering. And really what it's about, Biomade is a new organization. They just launched um, within the last year and a half or so. And so we're working with them on their education and workforce development to build awareness about not only the agency itself, but what is bioindustrial manufacturing? Like a lot of people out in the general community that don't come to meetings like this have no idea what we're talking about. So that's our, our goal, is to raise awareness, to connect individuals and educational institutions um, so that they can create career pathways for this emerging field. Um, so we had a couple deliverables. We had two meetings similar to this. We've had one and we'll have another one in early 2023. Um, our research team did a workforce gaps analysis tool. Uh, we did an environmental scan on the bioindustrial manufacturing industry. And we will be creating at the end of this year an ebook around, so an electronic book about STEM is bioindustrial manufacturing. If you've seen our semiconductor books or some of the other books we've done, they're really Fabulous, and so this is one of the things that we're doing to build that awareness. A second case study is a recent grant, National Science Foundation Collaborative Research, 
uh, BPE grant, and we are a subawardee on that grant with our with Morgan State University and uh, our partners Jackson State and North Carolina. Um, and that is about minority mentoring for advancement and participation in engineering. So again, beyond Million Women Mentors, which many of you know about, we have some frameworks and some systems in place, including Atlas Jobs as a technology connector to help um, advance uh, mentoring programs. And finally, our what I'll call our confidential nonprofit organization. Um, we were asked to help them identify and secure an industry-relevant multi-million dollar partner for an ongoing specific STEM education program that they've done for years and wanted to continue with a new sponsor. And we were successfully able to do that through the private and comprehensive interviews, through our network of folks like you, we were able to help this organization continue a program that they had a lot of pride in and that they will be able to continue to impact many, many students. So those are our three case studies. I hope that that gets you thinking about how we might be able to partner with each other together. So what's in store for 2023? Well, we want to continue to further support our mission and our STEM Connectors missions, that's you guys. So we'll continue to identify RFPs, continue conversations with funders and decision makers that advance STEM education, career pathways, career placement, DEI, mentoring, et cetera. We're gonna to continue to identify partner organizations. Please come find me after this if you have any interest in learning more about that, or you can contact, there'll be an email at the, at the end of this. Um, and we're gonna to continue to submit proposals. And we're going to continue to try and get that win rate up a little bit so that we have more funds and more resources coming to support all of the students, teachers, and um, employees that we serve. We'll also begin to promote, educate, and encourage partnerships among all of us. So you're going to start to see more information about that in, um, in the, the um, materials that we put out. Um, we're going to start sending information in those materials and hosting sessions um, that go into more detail about all of these historic funding acts. I mean, in 30 plus years of fundraising, I've never seen more activity than has happened in the last six months under this administration, and it's very exciting. So we want to help consolidate that information, share it with you, and see if we can facilitate more connections. We're STEM connector, that's what we do. Um, so here's some of the things that uh, many of you probably know about, but may not have somebody on your team who has the time um, or experience to do the deep dive. We're going to try and do that and, and help you out with that information. Um, so here's some of the things that we have in our capabilities. We can serve as a backbone organization for um, for grants that have many partners. Oftentimes our university partners love to do the research, love to run the program don't love so much to do the reporting and the administration and the budget requests. So we're able to do that. Um, grant submission and award management. We can use Atlas Jobs and we have several um, organizations. One of our funded programs will be using Atlas Jobs to connect mentors and to connect schools and serve as a resource for them to stay connected with one another. Uh, and we have a couple more pending. So we want to be able to talk to you about how that might support the programs and the work that you do. Um, uh, industry market analysis and environmental scans, research and evaluation, conferencing, networking, convenings like we have going on today, webinars, strategic planning, and ebooks. So, any of those are interests, please let us know. And here you go, here's the uh, promised email address. If you have a STEM project idea or you want to inquire how we might partner together, then contact me or contact whoever your um, connection is and see if they can make the connection for us. So I know that was really quick. I just wanted to run through that. Most of you didn't know that this was something we were doing, and I hope you walk away with, with um, some ideas sparking.